YouTube family, what's going on with y'all, man? My name's Kieran Davis. I'm the owner, founder of Contagious Co. We're a clothing brand focused on making self-love contagious for mental health awareness, suicide prevention. Look, we also like to donate to mental health organizations for mental health research, and we host a self-love club, just a support group for those struggling, uh, basically get them snacks, refreshments, just a safe place for everybody to vent. Guys, I know a lot of you guys been here for a while. Thank you guys for tuning back in. I know it's been a little minute, but so much has been going on and I want to fill you guys in on my life, on my journey, on my entrepreneur journey, right? And let me tell you guys, right now with my business, we are knocking on the door to having or doing a $100,000 year, right? Currently, right now, I'm at like 70K. And I just want to tell you guys just my journey, what it's been like this year, and just man just just tell y'all tell y'all everything for real for real so just to be completely transparent this youtube channel is really going to turn into like a journal for me um so you guys are going to be a part of that journey you guys are going to kind of work as my soundboard as my support group um because this is very 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 challenging and, and it's why a lot of people don't do this right but we're made for this man we got the willpower for this we got the strength we got the mindset for these things and i'm just gonna let you guys know that so on here, you're going to start seeing me put a lot of uh, what I'm going to call journal entries, just the, the journey for myself, the process, the ups, the downs, just being completely transparent with you guys so you guys can see this business build in front of your faces into a multi-million dollar empire, right? So we're going to start right here. Um, I know if you haven't seen, I have a video on here about doing $14,000 in a month, right? This is my first month opening my first um, you know, retail location I had a kiosk in the mall. Well, I have a kiosk on the mall, right? And how that process been. And I kind of gave anybody who's interested in following that blueprint steps on how they can do the same exact thing, right? Because guys, the information is out there, right? So let me kind of speed you guys up on everything and tell you what's been going on with me. I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys, right? So for one, anybody who's an aspiring entrepreneur or who's just started a business or um, is just in any point in that process, I want to just really just tip, like, you know, salute you guys because it is a challenging journey that a lot of people just cannot make it through. There's going to be storms because as most of us would just live life, working a job and then balancing your work life and your home life, right? Relationships, family, friends, children, hobbies, whatever the case may be. When you, when you become an entrepreneur, right, you're taking away the security of a job. You don't know how much money is coming in. You're building something up. You don't know how much money you're going to be able to pay yourself. And you still got bills to do, right? You might still have a significant other. You might still have children. You might still have personal hobbies and things like that. When I tell you that your business is going to consume most of your time, your business is going to consume most of your thoughts, most of your thinking, right? So that it's, it, it becomes less and less time for uh, leisure things or just, you know, things that also bring you back life, family, romance, things like that, right? So in February, um, February 2023, I quit my job. I was working in the banking industry. I quit my job to open a kiosk location. Now, I knew I, I, I knew that this was going to be a, a, a hard process, you know, because like I said, it's taboo. It's taboo to leave security, to go out and, and be uncomfortable. People are afraid of that, right? They want to stay where it's comfortable. But if part of becoming successful is taking risks and putting yourself in a position to win. It might not look pretty in the short, but it's going to look really, really good in the long term. Let, uh, you know, have you stick with everything and see everything through and through. Right. So <clears throat> prior to leaving, I didn't just quit my job on a whim. Didn't know what was going on. No, I joined a high level inner circle mastermind group hosted by uh, Nick, Nick and Marlon, uh, Marlon Watts, Nicholas Clark and World of Vision. Right. They build a brand, they build a, a, a business, right, called Activate Your Vision. So they see success, started with $120, built up to a multi-million dollar brand, and they see success coming from, you know, the, uh, you know, what they say, the, the Fifth Ward, Sixth Ward, and, um, you know, and, and New Orleans. And um, young black guys built up this thing, and they want to help other people come and understand that, hey, anything's possible, you can do it, trust in your vision, believe in yourself, right? Joined their inner circle, and it was just so much game, so much information. Blew my mind, right? Blew my mind. At this point, I'm stressed because I'm like, man, everything I thought was wrong. Everything I'm doing is wrong. I need to redo all of this, recreate all of this. And 
it was a blessing because, see, <clears throat> you got people close to you that don't tell you the truth. They lie to you. You know what I mean? And they think they're doing it for your good or out of love, but it's hurting you, right? So the original design I had, I remember like it was yesterday, Marlon was like, yeah, this this ain't it, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I knew it wasn't it, but I'm an eager person and I wanted to just start. And some of y'all that you're trying to be perfect and you're never going to be perfect. So just start. So it wasn't bad because I had a lot of things that I did get good compliments on, right? But I had to redo a lot of different things. Came up with a new design through um, a couple of close people that I was able to get good feedback from. And I found the design, found the design, doubled down on it. I launched it and I was able to sell this small batch of product in a weekend. Now, at this time, I was probably making $400 to $1,200 a month, right, from my business, right? Once I got into this program, did a new design, I launched this, and then that weekend, I made about $1,200, which was about what I would make in a month span, in a weekend. So I already knew the information they were giving me was priceless, and I already knew that it was working, and I just had to run the play and follow suit on what they were telling me. So at this point, I'm working in the banking industry, so I'm giving about nine hours a day to my job. And one of my one of my uh, close friends, right, what I would call like a brother, uh, Malik, he has a brand called Lost Hearts. At the time, 18 years old, he opened his kiosk in February. He already did 10K plus. You know, February got 28 days. So I'm like, my boy, he going crazy. You know what I mean? We're all in the same inner circle, right? And I'm like, man, I could do this too, but I can't do this with my job. So I leave my job, man. I didn't have a bunch of money set aside. I didn't have none of that. I had a vision. I believed in it. I trusted in the vision. I ran the play. I leave my job. At the same time I leave my job, my grandfather passes away. So it's a very, very tough situation. Now I'm making a big life change. My granddad just passed away and I'm like trying to get everything together. So March 1st, I open the kiosk. I take my younger brother up there with me just because really because I was nervous. I didn't want to be alone. It wasn't like he knew how to sell. It wasn't like he knew how to do anything. I just needed somebody with me. And, um, he was with me thugging for like two weeks and he's like, man, you know, it's too much because we're there all day. And um, I had to teach myself how to sell. Guys, if you're, as an entrepreneur, you're going to constantly have to learn skills. Sometimes you're going to learn these skills while you're in the water, while you're in the fire. Right. So I had to teach myself how to sell. Every time somebody didn't stop and let me talk to them, why didn't they stop? Right. Every time somebody didn't purchase after me telling them about the brand, why didn't they buy? And I'm critiquing myself and trying to figure out how I got to be better, right? Now I'm at the point where, man, I can sell to anybody, sell anything, right? As long as I believe in it, I can sell anything. Right? So, so we have a crazy month, run it up 14K. And uh, at the mall, you have different lease and agreements and contracts, right? So once you do a certain, once you do over a certain amount, they're going to charge you extra. So uh, my kiosk is about $800. When I tell you I did 14K, them boys sent me an invoice for about three bands, about three bands, right? I still got to go get more inventory. I still got to do all these other things. I still got stuff that I'm investing in the kiosk, right? You got to get cameras. You got to make sure you got the POS system good. You got to get hangers. You got to get your, basically your kiosk location looking as professional as possible for where you're currently at. So that three bands kind of hurt because at the time, I had a lot of different people in my ears telling me, Congratulations, you should pay yourself four bands. You should pay yourself three bands. You should congratulate yourself, man. You made it. You made it. Truthfully, I ain't did shit yet. I ain't made it nowhere, right? This is just one stint. And when I tell you that, there were so many mistakes made after that financially that just set me back, man. It really set me back. And part of that mistake is, one, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know until you go through it. And sometimes it's too late to fix it, right? but you know it for the next time around. And you make sure you got people around you that you can get advice from and talk to them about the situations so that you can understand the best decision to make, right? Understand, these locations, they don't lose money for you not being there, right? They only make money when they fill up that void, when they put somebody in that vacant spot. So it's like, they're already making money, so now they're gonna make more money off. You're getting penalized for being a winner, you know what I mean? So it's a different thing about that, man. If you're in that situation and you're going through that, you can comment down, DM me on Instagram, contagious underscore CO. We can have that conversation if you're going through that too, for certain steps to kind of help you out in that way. But like I said, 
I got to get inventory at the time my inventory was, I was supposed to be like 10 to 14 days. It was come back in like 17 days and it was just slowing down the whole operation and everything was turning around super, super fast. I mean, we were probably selling like 300 items in like seven, I mean like 10 to 14 days. So I had to double up, double up, double up, go get 600, go get this. And um, when that's slowing down, now you're running out of inventory and you're waiting a couple of days to get back in the game. That's a couple of days that's potentially costing you um, about say 900 to probably $2,000 um, when you just, when your motion is thrown down like that, you know what I mean? So <laughs> that's that stint. Simultaneously, I found out that me and my, you know, me and my fiance were expecting a, a you know, a baby. So we're excited because we've been trying for some years, we're trying for some years. And um, found out we were expecting simultaneously. So now my mind's ringing. I, I'm, I'm seeing some success in my business. I just left my job and I'm expecting a child for the first time. And um, so I'm turned up. I'm turned up. Right. And I'm at the kiosk all the time. And I noticed that, like, you know, she started like calling, leaving work sick, not feeling good. And I'm thinking like it's just pregnancy symptoms. You know, it'll be OK once we get through the further in the process, got the first trimester. And um, we go for our 20 week anatomy scan. And this is a couple months after. Right. Go for the 20 week anatomy scan, found out that the baby's developing with, um, you know, uh, deformalities. And as basically the um, like my daughter's skull didn't form around her head. So the brain was exposed. So no matter what we decided, if we went the full term or if we decided to terminate the pregnancy, the baby was not going to survive. Right. So prayer, act, talking to family. Um, we decided that she's in excruciating pain. She can't even function. She actually lost her job, um, you know, just not being able to perform. She actually uh, lost her job and not being able to perform. So um, I'm like, I don't want to make the decision for you, you know, like your body, you know, <laughs> that thing, right? Trying to understand it. And um, so she decided to terminate the thing. And I agree with her. I'm going to stand by her side, right? So now now this, mind you, she 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 lost her job at this point. I'm running a business full time. I don't have a job, right? I'm running a business, don't have a job, right? I don't have a set amount of money that I'm going to make. I pay myself like a small percentage of what I make. And that's based on what I make, right? You don't kill nothing. You don't eat. So at this time, man, we had to go out to Pittsburgh. They had back to back appointments. One was in the uh, morning. The next one was like 6 a.m. So we like, we might as well get a hotel. Uh, these type of procedures aren't covered by health insurance, so you got to pay that out of pocket. So this is slowing me down. I had workers at my kiosk at the time. I mean, I'm talking about no sales, bro. They're not getting no sales. And that's another challenge too, trying to hire employees and find people who care about your vision, care about the business, and actually want to grow with you and actually, you know, treat it like their own. Very, very, very hard to find, man. Very hard to find. We're going to talk about that more in depth in other episodes, but... So at the time I'm, I'm in Pittsburgh, at my kiosk, there's no motion. There's no motion. You know, I'm waiting for my inventory to show up too because we're, we're kind of running low too. Inventory come, my printer calls me and lets me know, hey, the, the person you got up here is not doing anything. I saw, I sat here and watched them for a couple of minutes and they're just walking around texting on their phone. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, I got to spend money that I don't have to spend on something that is like important, right? And at the same time, we're not making money at the kiosk. So slow motion, get my product in there and things like that. And um, super, super tough, man. At this time, you're grieving um, a child that, you know, hasn't been born. You never actually met the child and you're grieving them. Right. And it's a, and it's a crazy pain because you're sitting here thinking to yourself, man, I want a boy or is it going to be a girl? And right. People talk about oh, gender reveals. And you get there and find out that the baby's not even going to make it. It's a different type of pain, man. Stacked up on the stress of already building a business and doing all these other things like that, right? So so mentally, right, at this point, the workers I had, I'm like, I need to find new workers. Um, but at this time, I'm so mentally out of it, mentally, emotionally, just out of it, that like I wasn't able to perform the way I needed to at my kiosk almost for like the, the next two months, right? My sales are dropping, my performance is dropping, my energy is dropping. Mentally, I'm just like fighting depression. And this is a big thing where I talk about mental health too. Um, mental health right now is said to be the 10th leading cause of death for Americans and fifth for minorities in America. 
It's such a big thing. I'm so very, very passionate about it. Anybody who's already been on here knows this. And um, such a big thing, man. And at the time, I'm really going through it. And nobody really understands that. And um, for women, right, my fiance, she had a support group. You know, people checking on her, calling on her. It's still a challenge for her too, right? She lost the baby physically and emotionally and mentally as I, as I did, but it was a physical loss as well. A void there because the body starts to become comfortable with the baby being present. Now the baby's not there, right? But as men, we don't get a break. We do not get a break. When we're going through things, we have to basically just get over it. Keep going, right? Bills got to get paid. Money got to be made. It just can't stop. So you got to put on a mask and fake a smile and go out here and do it. And at that time, I couldn't do it to the best of my ability, you know? So at this time, you're supposed to try your best every day. But at this time, my best was like 45%. But like, you know, I said, as men or as professionals, right? Because there's a lot of women who can relate to this as well. Nothing's going to stop for you because you're sad. Nothing's going to stop for you because you're depressed. This is not how life works. So invoices kept coming in. The, and and, and the, the revenue wasn't there to meet those demands. So here's one of the next biggest mistakes I made. I took on investors and I took on investors to help cover invoices. Huge mistake, huge mistake that would set me back months. And because um, they're going to get a return on the investment, but you didn't get all product with this investment. So they're only eating at your bottom line. You know, they're just eating at your bottom line. Realistically, I should have just waited, doubled down on stuff. And if I did take it the rest of the time, I should have just been strictly on product to kind of, you know, boost that up. First mistake, you know. And then I'm paying all this stuff out, right? And things are slow. Not only was I going through it, it was actually slow at the mall. I'm not in a super popping mall, but I make it pop. I make it pop. You know what I mean? So at the time it was slow. And I wasn't at my best. So I'm being suffocated. So I make another dumb decision, right? But this kind of fell in my lap. It was a blessing. I met this lady in the mall trying to tell her about my brand, just try to sell to her. And she starts chewing me out about how, like, it seems like I'm taking advantage of mental health. And it was just crazy to me because I'm just like, man, you don't even know me. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know anything. A big reason why I started my brand is because when I was a kid, my mom attempted suicide and I was homeless a lot growing up. You know what I mean? So I saw the effects of depression. I saw the effects of this trauma. And I'm a, you know, I'm not going to say a victim of it. Right. But I, I'm a testimony. Right. So it wasn't until I got older where I started getting into personal development, reading a lot of books, things like that. Led me to therapy, found out I had a severe anxiety disorder and mild depression. I didn't know nothing about none of this. But that took me down the rabbit hole. And that's when I started originally making YouTube videos about this because I'm like, man, I'm not the only person going through this. They say one out of four adults suffers with some sort of mental illness. Is that anxiety, depression, ADHD, um, you know, PTSD, bipolar, whatever, right? So, so very common, but yet no one talks about it and we don't see it because everybody hides it, right? So this lady, uh, she ended up getting in, con we kind of had like a little dispute. I wasn't disrespectful or anything. She wasn't disrespectful. She was hurtful, but not disrespectful. It is what it is. We end up having a conversation. She calls, She reaches back out to me. I'm, I go to her place. Turns out she's a big business owner, seeing a lot of success, and she and she invested $5,000 into my brand. And this super saved me, right? Because at the time, I'm like, man, it's it's not looking good. It's not looking good for the kid. You know what I mean? I got motion. I got demand. But I mentally wasn't on my game and, uh, and induced a certain circus. And now, now, whatever the case may be, there might, there might be some super tough men out there that can just take it on the chin. I couldn't. I couldn't. I was going through it. I was still showing up, but I wasn't my best, you know. So when she gave me this investment, I put all that on inventory and um, I had motion again, right? But I'm going crazy. Boom, 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 boom. Had to pay her back uh, in three months. She didn't want nothing on top of it. She just wanted it back. So it was cool. But now I'm still paying back to other investors. You know, I got other capital out. And then I got to pay her back too. So it helped me keep the show on the road. 
but it didn't solve the problem. You understand what I'm saying? Now, some of you guys might be thinking, like, how come you just didn't um, use, like, credit or banks and things like that? Well, I'm from the PJs, you feel me? So a lot of the people that I know, they aren't able to utilize credit because credit was already messed up before you was even on your own. You know what I mean? And um, if you know, you know. If you don't, God bless you because you win it. But it wasn't like that for me. So I couldn't go the traditional lending route. You know what I mean? So I'm in a bind right here. I'm in a bind right here. Demand is up. Got motion. and um, But I'm suffocated. I'm suffocated. So for anybody, I tell you guys, man, take on investors as a last result. And if you do take on, take it on, put, and only invest it into whatever is bringing in revenue. You know what I mean? Only invest it into what's bringing revenue. Um, or you're going to make the same mistake. Unfortunately, life and business, you're going to make mistakes. And there's some things that you can't learn until you go through, it, you know, even if you get all the questions you ever want to ask somebody who's done it, things like that, you're still going to make mistakes on your own because you just can't wake up and run a six figure business. You got to go through the process. For me, I grew super fast. In 30 days, I went from $1,000 a month to $10,000 a month. And I wasn't at the level I needed to be to run this business the way it has to be run, right? It's new. It's new for me. It's a new business. Some things you got to learn from going through it. No one can save you. And you got to take ownership and accountability of it and figure out how you're going to grow, right? So like, fortunately, I'm still in the same circle group that I'm in. Uh, with World of Vision, Nick and Marlon. And I met a lot of great people in there. So Malik, Brianna, Nick Castro, James, um, Gary, Everett. So many, so many people. If I say a name, everybody, i will just be lost for days, right? But in in the transparency and the relatability and the realness and the authenticity helped me get through this because entrepreneurship is a foreign language to a lot of people and everybody just can't speak it, you know? And I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be around people who can speak the same language as me and help me through these trials. Because if not, I don't know if I would have had the willpower, you know, um, and, and just also just the strength uh, from the, our creator to the most high to help me get through these things that I'm still able to keep going now. Now, I'm still battling these things. But like I said, I still have motion and the demand is high. The demand is very high. Right. So entrepreneurs solve problems for profit. If you're not faced with a new problem, you're not growing. You're just not growing. So just because you have a problem in your business is not a bad thing. That means you're growing. You either need to build a new system. You need to educate yourself and learn more. You know what I mean? There's something in there. There is gold in that problem. You just got to solve it. And how long it takes you to solve it, right? And how many and, and just not making the same mistakes over and over and also understanding what mistake you made so that you can learn from it and grow from it. Right. So. My goal right now to end the year at 100K, you know, completely feasible in my mind, it's already done. It's already done. Now, it's not about the amount of money I make. It's about the impact that I'm able to have. And as I can grow, I can have more impact. See, my goal is to be able to build like these sort of clubhouses, um, you know, for people struggling with mental health and things like that and connect it with apparel. I'm not going to go too, too far in it because I ain't there yet and I don't want anybody to capitalize on it. And even if they do do it, they're not going to do it like contagious um, because it's just not going to be contagious if they do it right. So it's not about like me making a lot of money because anybody who is in business knows in the beginning, you don't make no money. The business is going to make money. But you're not gonna make no money, right? Uh, you just somebody still chasing a dream, still chasing a goal. But there's a there's a a goal at the end of this. I want to impact lives. I want to help people. I want to change the world for the little time that I exist. Have an impact on the rest of the world and change the way we perceive certain things. Um, you know, there's a lot of stigma placed on men and women. Uh, for just struggling mentally and different things like that. And some of this stuff is genetics. Some of this stuff is just chemical imbalance, um, you know, because anybody can feel depression, but some people are like, are depressed. You understand what I'm saying? And it's something hard to understand until you dive deep into it. 
but it's a big problem. I think a lot of issues in the world stem from mental illness, right? So that's the thing. So it's been a super, super challenging journey for me. And um, I'm actually in a point now where I don't want to pay myself from the business for a while right now. So I went to pick up a part-time job. It's like four in the morning to like nine in the morning. Still allow me to do whatever I got to do. I'm just sacrificing some more sleep. But sometimes these are things you got to do. And I'm also in other uh, conversations to invest in other business and other opportunities to be able to compound my streams of income so that I can just keep feeding this, you know, just to keep feeding this. Because, yeah, I sell apparel, but that's not my business, right? What I, what I sell people is self-love. What I sell people is the understanding that you matter, that you're fine the way that you are, that the world needs you, that you make the world a better place. That's really what I sell. I don't sell t-shirts. I don't sell hoodies. I sell people self-acceptance. I sell people self-assurance. I sell people self-esteem. What they already have in them, I just remind them that that exists and that is what is contagious. You understand? So just follow me on this journey, guys. Uh, it's a challenging journey because life still happens. So many things still happen. But when, you, when you're doing what you're doing for something bigger than you, you dedicate your life to that. Because one day I'm not going to be here. Death is promised. But I want to leave a legacy that can impact the world for years, and decades, centuries. Right? And... I'll get deeper into that in other videos. I know it's already long, but I thank you guys for being here. Um, if anybody is running a business or struggling with a product-based business or anything like that, you can message me on Instagram, contagious underscore CO. I'm going to put the link down in the description. With any question you have, if you want to jump on a call, we're going to jump on a call. Um, you know, Like I said, we're, we're, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate and blessed, and I don't take anything for granted. You know, We're going to do 100 k you know, it's a new business. I've been doing this a little over a year, right? So very blessed and fortunate. Yet still learning and growing every day. As long as you trust the process and don't skip the process, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. You know, if y'all want to support, check us out, contagiousco.us. Check out our mission. Check out our story. Check out our product. Show some support as well. And uh, until next time, man, peace. I love you guys. Take care of yourself.